if you find this video helpful please do well to subscribe click on the subscribe button click on the like button and share to your friends and family and be sure that we will meet again all right we'll do more videos for you as long as you keep subscribing keep liking and keep uh, sharing our videos we appreciate you for everything you do take those words seriously huh? it is when you know them you know that they spend their money for their things meanwhile those guys were poor men before they entered into the political scene and they did not go there to represent you they went there to steal and after stealing you that shared fellowship with them in the days of their poverty <laughs> don't think they still have the memory of you in their scheme of things it is very difficult for you when you make money to remember the poor and these guys were going into ministry and the grace on them was tangible it was going to produce God will honor the according with the resources. You know what the, the elders told them? Remember the poor. Many times we can get so lost in pulpit work that we don't know that we are wicked. The ministry of mercy. I don't have time. Please help me say it to yourself. Remember the poor. In my note, I wrote that apostolic revival is associated with a revival of love. Apostolic revival is associated with a revival of love. As a family, we, we know how much we can take as a family, me and my wife. We know how much we can take. In the, we believe so much in the ministry of mercy. We believe in it. Not from today, oh. we believe in it from the beginning, even when we were still um, caught in. We believe in it. So as long as God gives us the strength, we'll have people stay with us that we don't even know their parents. Those vulnerable ones will find a place and a covering where they can be confident to prosecute destiny. What the elders told the upcoming apostles was what? Remember. Remember the poor. Is that clear? Alright, so that's the ministry of mercy. Yes, I made a statement. I say apostolic revival is associated with a revival of love. Acts chapter 4, verse 34 to 35. Acts chapter 4, verse 34 to 35. Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of things that were sold. Next verse. And laid them down at the apostles' feet and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. With the apostolic revival that we are expecting is also a revival of love. How many of you on campus, you were part of a prayer group or stuff? Was there love there? Because if there's no love there, all of you were hypocrites. Yes, if, as you begin to press into God, one of the things that God does is that He begins to shed abroad our hearts by the Holy Ghost, the love of God. Because I know people that came to school, came, came for in a new session, academic session, with new stuff, new clothes. By the time we continue in the prayer, mid-semester, you see watches have changed hands. And you will see one shirt that you saw with this brother is now with another brother. You will see all things have changed. It doesn't matter what you come with. You know that the, at the end of the semester. You are not likely to go back with that in your inventory. Because every apostolic revival is a revival of love. They brought, nobody forced them to sell the land. Nobody forced them to do the things that they did. But those things that they did, they did them. Because they were compelled and constrained by the Holy Ghost. And that was why God had to judge Ananias and Sapphira with so much bitterness and vengeance because 
The Holy Ghost did not descend on them to sell their property. The Holy Spirit is aware of the people that he, he compelled to sell their lands. And when Ananias came and brought one money, the Holy Spirit had to reveal to Peter that I did not fall on this one. I did not compel this one. He's lying against me. He's lying against me. There was a spiritual thing that was building in the congregation. A culture of the Spirit. Another tributary of the culture of heaven was entering into their midst. And there was a man that came to fake it and the Holy Spirit would not let him. Remember the poor. I know when you see yourself as, as a preacher in your dreams, you normally see yourself with Agbada and with, with um, bodyguards that are just moving like that. A powerful man. You never see yourself with the poor. <laughs> you, don't, you don't see yourself with the poor. Remember the poor. If the apostles, if the senior apostles never knew that it was di- so easy to forget them, he would never say, remember. You see yourself with your protocol. Coming into the, the, the crusade ground, walking majestically and everybody is hailing. That's what you see in your dream. You don't see yourself in Uruku market. Remember the poor. Even, even your dream is not sensitive to the poor. <laughs> You need to make effort. Effort to remember. The poor. Let, me, let me stop there. Acts chapter 11 verse 27 to 30. Every apostolic revival is associated with the revival of love. Don't forget that. Every apostolic revival. Every. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. And there stood up one of them named Agabus and signified by the spirit that there was going to be a great death or a great famine throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea because of the prophetic word that came through Agabus. There was a strategic financial pool that was made available to minister to the brethren in Judea because they were were most hit during the time of the famine because they were not in a strategic point. They were not a no-down city. They were not an economic hub. So, the church of Jesus in another landscape that had a better economy took care of them in the time of crisis. Boko Haram has been ravaging the churches in the north for a long time. The question is, what what are the churches in southern Nigeria doing? It is very easy for you to dwell in comfort and be blinded to a man that is afflicted. And so the senior apostle said, what? Remember the Pope. The proof that the revival that we are pioneering is, is genuine is the ministry of mercy. Because you can be anointed and wicked. You can be graced and terrible. On the crusade ground in Abuja, a man of God was doing miracles and people were coming to give testimonies. So one of his pastors now came with a message and then on the pulpit there, there were filming him. He, he turned and slapped the pastor. Oh! And he continued taking the, the testimony. <laughs> he gave him a dirty slap on the pulpit. <laughs> and spoke harshly to him. Then he continued with the miracles. Continued working miracles. A man can be anointed and wicked. It can be anointed and so uncompassionate. And so the apostle said, remember. Remember the poor. So every apostolic movement is associated with a revival of love. And then finally in my notes I wrote, the abundance of one Christian 
means the need of another Christian is met. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 14 and 15. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 14 and 15. And the thing is this. If you make yourself an instrument of mercy, the flow will never cease. I'm telling you a secret. I know you will not hear it. But if you make yourself an instrument of mercy, the flow, the flow of finances, the flow of favor will never cease. If you buy everything you own, you are in darkness. The favor of God has not seen you. And you need to run a check. Because what is trying to happen is that you are on your own, laboring in your strength. Are you with me? There's something called favor. And that thing will ensure that you don't need to buy everything you need. The things you need can come without buying. You, 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 can, you can acquire without money. Give me the scripture. Give me the scripture quickly. It said, bought by... Uh-uh, I can't see that. Second Corinthians chapter 8. Sorry. Let me get it. Let me open it up myself. Second Corinthians 8. This number 14. But by an inequality, that now at this time your abundance may be a supply to their want. Okay, wait, let me. Mm, 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 mm. Um, okay, might be a supply to their want that there may be equality. Your abundance may be a supply to their want, your own abundance. So if one Christian is in abundance, it means that it is meant for another. The ministry of mercy. And so when you are harvesting from your field, you don't pick up all the ears of corn. So when your salary is paid, it's not everything that comes into your account that is for your consumption. Part of it is ordained for mercy. Hallelujah. So that's the ministry of mercy. Oh my God. Let's do giving. Even though I have five more minutes, we'll do it in five minutes. The ministry of giving, which is different from the ministry of mercy, Hallelujah. Romans chapter 12 verse 8. Romans chapter 12 verse 8. On he that exhorted on exhortation, and he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. So the regulation for giving is what? Simplicity. The regulation for giving is Simplicity. The regulation for mercy is cheerfulness. I am excited doing it. There is a great excitement that seizes my soul when I have to give to a vulnerable person. Don't consume all that comes your way by the mercies of God on yourself. Generate a triple tree by which you minister to the vulnerable. And when you do that, the resources will never run dry. Never run dry. Never run dry. Alright, let's look at giving. Um, Matthew chapter 6 from verse 1. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 1. Giving. There are rules, there are different kinds of giving. In the Bible, we have given to God, and if you are paying your, your tithe, it is God's portion. It is not yours. Are you following? So you cannot decide against it. That one is God's portion. Is that clear? 
is God's due. If it is true that you honor God, that is his due. And the reason for which he insists that we should honor him that way is so that there will be substance available in his house for his business to continue unhindered. Alright? So that's his due. So I don't want to talk about that. It is part of honor. And when you go to the book of Malachi, you are going to see how that, that a generation lost the culture of honor. And then they bring creatures for sacrifice that are blinded. And the prophet said, can you give this to your governor? As part and parcel of our relationship with God is a commitment to honor that must never die in any generation. Some of us do not operate on the tight level. We were praying four days ago in my house because we have our own prayer times. And I was sitting down and some of the brethren were leading prayers. And the Lord whispered to me, he said, take one million naira, send it to this brother. The person he said I should send it to is not a pastor, a brother. I said, yes. Two minutes after I heard that one, he said, take 500,000, send to this person. I said, yes, I, when the prayer end, prayers ended, I went back home. I went back to my room. I slept. When I woke up, the first thing I heard was, take one million naira, send to that brother. He emphasized it in the morning. I said, yes. I forgot. We came for service. You know, once it is two o'clock, in fact, twelve o'clock for me, it, the day begins to run. So I forgot the next morning again I woke up and said, Send! When you have been faithful in honoring God with your tithes, God can give you a giving instruction. There is a first level. Your tithe is, when you begin to give your tithe, it means you are responsible and you are a child of honor. Then it's only children of honor that God gives financial instructions. Just in case God has not given you a financial instruction before, take the 500 naira in your hand, give to the lady that is sitting close to you in church. If you have not, not heard that, it means there is a challenge with your O-level requirement. O-level requirement. O-level requirement. So I obeyed. I gave the 1 million and I gave the 500,000. Do you know that after I did this, as I was coming out from the bank, I started receiving a lot. In three days' time, I got the one million back. No, four days. Today is the fourth day. Four, today is the fourth day. Got the one million back. Four days' time. What work, what job can I do in four days that I will earn? One million. Four days time. I think 1.5 million is big money. In my experience with God, it doesn't take more than four days for God to... All the times He led me to give, it doesn't take more than four days for Him to build back one million. And when God asks you to give, it means the harvest is already there. For the next few months, that obedience is the trigger that has given me access to a strange kind of harvest. There is no job. I work in the petroleum industry, so I, that's the highest paying industry in Nigeria. But I've seen God Give me four times of my salary in one month because of giving. Right? Four times. 
And this is something I have done over the years. It's a culture. God will only instruct those that fulfill the requirement of honor. 